Hello, Porterfield, and anybody else who might be tuning into this. Um, hopefully, as always, you always hope technical stuff is working, so hopefully audio is working and everything. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for uh, tuning in or playing this back later on and watching it. Um, I hope you, everyone's having an awesome day and an awesome evening. Uh, I just have, um, you know, like I typically try to do, I'm just going to, what I'm going to discuss tonight, a little bit that we're going to go into with our uh, youth ministry this evening. Um, and we've been going through uh, the book of Acts. And uh, so, um, you know, just looking at, at, at the early church, and of course what was uh, amazing is, is that, you know, of course, no, it's, it's kind of maybe not so well known, but uh, the book of Acts is actually like part two of, um, you know, Luke, the book of Luke, because it just continues on the story of Jesus and, you know, kind of what happens after, uh, you know, raising from the tomb and, and, and things like that. He revealed himself to all those people over those many, many, many days. Uh, and then it just talks about how to kind of set it up the early church. So we've just been going through the book of Acts. And so the little bit that we're going to be reading uh, this evening with the students is Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 40, 42. And I'm going to read it. And it's just something really neat that kind of um, sticks out, that um, which is just a small snippet of everything we're talking about this evening. Because there's so much good stuff, right? I mean, it's good stuff in the whole Bible. A lot of awesome stuff uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, but it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship uh, to the breaking of bread and, and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds uh, to all, uh, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food and, and the, with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So, um, you know, y you read this and there's a phrase that can kind of pop into your mind uh, pertaining to this. It's kind of like, do life together, right? Because uh, there, there's something inside of us that even even the most introverted of us, right? Uh, but there's something inside of us, and it's, it's, it's the way God created us. We're, we're created to be in relationships. We're created to, to be together uh, in some form of relationship. Um, we're built for that community aspect of it. And so, you know, and, and we live in the, in the great age now of connect, connectivity. And, of course, during this whole... COVID situation. I know us here at Porterfield, we have tried our best to make sure we can stay connected to and with everybody. And we have the means to do it. We have the, the, the necessary equipment. We have the necessary uh, awesome volunteers who, who know exactly how to use that equipment uh, and, and to maximize the way that we can communicate uh, over distances. So, so we have this, this great social media and, and interaction stuff to make us make it possible for us to connect with anyone and everyone with you know little to none uh, effort on, on our parts as of right now you know just using my phone uh, and, and having the Facebook option of, of live streaming we're connecting you know I can see comments may not be able to talk to me but I can read comments uh, and, and and whatnot but we, we have that connectivity but if you if there's a catch to all this, right? There, there's always there's always pros and cons. It seems like um, because if you look at a lot of latest uh, studies and things like that, and that even though we're more connected than we ever have been, I mean, we're connecting to high school our high school friends that have kind of you know after graduation went our own ways. You can reconnect to people even way back in the day, you know. So. Even though we have all this, we're connected um, with one another more than we ever have been. There's there's also this feeling of of more lonely uh, and um, you know and, and kind of more unknown than we've ever felt. And it seems odd, right? We're we're connected. We're we're doing all these things. How do we feel alone if we're connected with more people than we ever are? 
Uh, but somewhere along the way, what happens is that all of this connectivity and community and togetherness, something hasn't fully clicked, hasn't fully fell into place yet. And, and because, you know, with so much commonality and shared experiences, right, because we sh can share in each other's experiences. I demonstrate a story or put a picture or, or put a video, I'm sharing that experience with everybody. And that's the, kind of the, the, the point, one of the major points in that. And so here we are sharing this, yet somehow I mean, a lot of people feel more than others. You, you feel a void. You know, so what is that void? What, what's missing? And you know, you look at, at this text, and you know, the, the opening line was, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship. Uh, and so <clears throat> there's in that text are the answers. The, you know, it holds the answer to some of this. And, you know, the, the do life together, that, that phrase may not really do, do the meaning of it justice, uh, what we see here, but because it goes so much deeper than that. Jesus was trying to instruct or show, and, and God's trying to instruct the people to, to have this growing community of believers, right? You know, formed after the ascension of Jesus and the arrival of the Holy Spirit coming to them at Pentecost. So, when that happened, these people, they found a new way of life. They, they found this new way of doing life together that has such a deeper meaning to it uh, with a, a bigger transcending cause than just their everyday life. So, you know, you look at that opening thing, uh, opening few words in verse 42, and they devoted themselves. You know, so the piece I want to share with everyone uh, this evening is is looking at you know just this part about being devoted they devoted themselves and if you know you find out what they devoted themselves to and that's the teaching and fellowship right you know breaking of the bread and the prayer so they devoted themselves to that so what does the word devotion mean to you so that that's the challenge for this evening is, is to look and, and what does that word devotion mean to you I mean, I, I'm going to read the, the you know, the, def, the dictionary definition of it, but, you know, each of us have our own kind of way of, of defining that word uh, in ourselves. And whether we have an image of what devotion looks like uh, or what we know it should look like or, or whatever it might be. But, you know, we need to make sure we understand and, and have in ourselves, to, to define it within ourselves, what the word devotion means to us. And to be to be devoted to something is to persist in adherence to, to be intently engaged in, to attend constantly to. So to have devotion, and I love some of these, you know, I, I love intentionality. Uh, a great speaker and um, uh, a great um, leader and authority in leadership within churches and organizations is a guy named by John John. A guy named uh, John Maxwell. He does a lot of leadership stuff, and I've had the privilege of people to hear him in person as well as uh, video conferences and stuff. And one of one of his books and one of his major talks, he talks about intentionality, being super intentional in, in all that you do. And so here, to be devoted to something is meaning to be intently, intentionally engaged. Your 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 intent. Your 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 you're so focused on and engaged in something. And then, of course, the other part is to attend uh, constantly to. So you're attending to something constantly. You're, you're constantly monitoring. You're constantly looking at it. You're constantly managing it, whatever word you want to replace that with. So, so here we see that they devoted themselves, devoted themselves to what? To, to the teaching, to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowship that Jesus laid before and instructed everybody, right? So, you know, I think we need to, you know, examine what are we devoted to. Are we devoted? Are we constantly, intently engaged in, or, or are we attending constantly to our prayer life? Are we, you know, do we have that persistent and adherence, that persistence of, of our Bible or scripture reading? You know, are we constant, are we devoted enough to get ourselves out of bed Sunday morning to either come to the church or to get online to watch it when it's live? 
not just ah, I can watch it later. You know, I, this is this is going to resonate really big with the students this evening when I when I go over with them. But you know, I'm going to challenge them: Are you are they devoted enough that even though we're not having physical church as off like like we used to, are they devoted enough to get on the Zoom calls? Are they devoted enough to to you know watch the the live videos or the recorded videos on Sunday mornings that I put out there? You know. So it's all these things, and and yes, it's great to have this 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 social interaction that we can have from a distance and and be connected better than we ever have in the ages before us. But we are we were built and made for community. We were built and made to have those relationships, and you cannot have a relationship, uh, a very healthy, long, sustaining relationship, long distance through this type of interaction. And so just taking a look at how uh, you know, Jesus instructed the, the disciples at these times to go out, right, to form this early church, and, and you, you see the five main reasons and purposes of, of it later on in, in, in this chapter, but you know, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. The people, when, when the disciples came, the apostles came, and they're, they're given the teaching of Jesus, they're they're, you know, they're they're being empowered by the Holy Spirit, and they're pouring out to everybody. They devoted themselves. All that heard, they devoted themselves to it. And and you see what happens. You know, they were selling their possessions and belongings to distribute to to you know to whoever needed it. You know, all the proceeds to all and, and, and any that had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They receive their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having faith with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So you see the outcome of them being devoted to the apostles' teachings and then fellowship together, coming to the temple together, doing some of these other things together. The Lord added to their number day by day to those who were being saved. Uh, so... That's just really cool. And you see a couple of things that they were devoted to, you know, the apostles' teachings, the fellowship, a shared life of believers, the breaking of bread, the prayers. Further down, there, they mention some other things they're devoted to, providing for those in need, attending the temple, and praising God. So, you know, once again, I ask that question, what, is, what does devotion mean to you? What does is, what is being devoted mean to you? Uh, and is, is it you know, close to or similar to what God intends it to be. You know, what he instructed and kind of laid out with these apostles and these disciples back then uh, to where they were devoted to the teachings and the fellowship and the breaking of bread, the prayers, the providing for those in need, the, the attending things together, attending temple, attending church together, uh, and of course, praising God. Uh, so I hope that, uh, you know, enlightens you. I hope that it, that challenges you. Uh, you know, for me, devotion, I think that's a very strong point in me. I'm very loyal, very devoted. Uh, you know, I, I get really intently engaged in things. Uh, you know, it, it, if I feel really passionate, of course, well, of course we all do. Um, but, you know, I do know there are some areas that, that I lack in that devotion. So, you know, for me, I have to look at that, that definition for myself. And I want to make sure I mirror what these apostles and these people that were coming to know Christ, what they devoted themselves to, uh, and see if it lines in with, with, with my definition and what I'm devoted to. Uh, so let me just uh, say a quick prayer, and everyone can go back to having a wonderful evening. God, I thank you so much uh, for all that you are, all that you do. I uh, thank you for just loving us and taking care of us, and and I I thank you God for for the the book of Acts right here, Lord. As we see Jesus at the beginning of this book, you 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 came back and you revealed yourself to so many, and and then you 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 uh, poured out the Holy Spirit uh, to everyone, uh, and instructed them to go, uh, and they continue to carry that message and and to carry that teaching to all those that would hear them. And as it says in Scripture, day by day, more and more, more people are added to their number uh, that were being saved. And so you can see the outcome, 
the positive influential impactful outcome uh, of, of what that level of devotion has the disciples have that level of devotion and those that, that heard they, they devoted themselves to that as well to the teachings and the fellowship and because of that level of devotion the numbers of, uh, of your children grew those that are being saved grew and got added to and added to uh, and, and even to this day we continue to want to strive to, to, to add those numbers, not to, to hold that over as something grand or great or righteous, but that we are bringing more lost souls to you to be devoted to your teachings and, and the fellowship with one another. So thank you so much, and I pray you should continue to guide us, protect us, and keep us safe. And we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. A uh, quick update for all those that are on and seeing that the walking track is ahead of schedule I'll be the first to, I don't know if anybody mentioned that yesterday or anything like that but it was awesome to come in the parking lot yesterday and see the them already working so for all those that that knew about it hey it's it's awesome to see just to walk out there and watch them work and just stand by it and visualize the paving that's going to happen soon hopefully pray the weather holds good so they can continue their work but uh, it's just awesome to see God's work happen uh, and I'm sure, you know, either Pastor Mark or Pastor Eric, they'll do their own devotional out by it probably. Uh, I, I'll, I'm going to call it now uh, and, and see it. But and it's just so awesome to see how we can impact our community by simply just laying some pavement in a field. You wouldn't think it, but man, it is going to impact um, uh, for the glory of God. This is not just for us to go be healthy. It's for the community to really enjoy what we can provide uh, and, and give back that way. And it's just so awesome to see everything come together and, and just how it happens and, and, and grow. You know, because we need to continue to, if we can, if we can do something to, to build upon God's kingdom, uh, to advance it, uh, what, what stops us from doing that? What's holding us back? Uh, you know, I don't think there's nothing in this world that can hold us back from advancing his kingdom and I think that's happening right there in the field uh, so thank you guys so much uh, have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon take care